groups of people making sure we got as many people here now as we could because uh, we're going to start our film um, to give you, just to give you an idea of what prayer can do. I, I mean, it's, it's awesome to know that God would get you involved in things that will change the course of history, change the world, change people, change cities and nations. Amen. And so I think it's a, an awesome privilege to pray. And I always encourage people that prayer is not as difficult as we think. I think it makes prayer easier. If you can join with other believers uh, and add your faith to theirs, you'll see great results. And so uh, with pray, but I think the call to prayer is something the body of Christ needs to take more seriously, uh, and especially a call to watching prayer and committed prayer. Because if you can't commit to things, God really can't commit to you too well. The ministry of the Watchman began in 1987 in Cleveland, Ohio, in my living room. By 1990, we have moved out into a different venue, ready to serve the public and draw people into prayer. It began with a vision in Habakkuk 2.2 to write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he who sees it may run with it. It has advanced over the years. Our Detroit chapter began in 1994. Death is another enemy. God told us to defeat the spirit of assisted suicide and abortion. Assisted suicide fell with the conviction of Dr. Jack Kevorkian for murder. When he began to go on television and murder people, God said, it is enough. War was declared against the United States by Muslim extremists. We are all astonished to see the damage done in just a few minutes. God gave us a strategy, a way to flood the earth with prayer of protection for our troops. Over 40,000 bookmarks of Psalm 91 were distributed to the military, to prayer groups, to anybody who was willing to pray and anybody who was concerned. God is able to do a lot through our prayers, much more than you can ever imagine. It's a good thing to pray and not faint. But today, three generations hence, because of all of you and the many thousands who stand with us in marches like this all across the nation, life is winning again in America. Regarding the sanctity of life, we pray for missing and exploited children worldwide. The innocent faces began to speak to Pastor Shirley as she was going through the supermarket, and God spoke to her to collect those pictures of those faces and begin to pray for those children to be returned safely to their loved ones. Then in 2013, God brought a miracle safe return of three girls who were missing for over 10 years in Cleveland, Ohio. And now to the joyous homecoming. You know, Gina's mom long said every time for the last nine years that one day Gina would walk through that front door. Well, guess what? Today she did. God spoke to me that a breakthrough in the heavenlies had released those souls. And he told me that there should be rejoicing in every city and to tell the city of Detroit to begin to rejoice. In 2013, we began our monthly Rejoice Detroit prayer meetings. Part of the thrust of our prayer was to join and support spiritually what was being done in the natural through Bishop Tony and the MAN Network. MAN is an acronym for maintaining a neighborhood. MAN Network. The whole concept behind calling it the MAN Network is that we never uh, were in our thinking to just be a standalone organization, but uh, we were always willing to partner and collaborate and work together with other groups, in particularly patrol groups. Night, and we drive around with our yellow lights on and 
uh, we watch out for things, and particularly we try to uh, keep down arson and fires, etc. So um, that's what we do every day for our children to keep our children safe. In 2017, another breakthrough occurred. God began to move prayer and openness to God back into the Detroit school system. Um, we had the opportunity to be part of like the second convening of, of pastors in the city of Detroit. And so we have a, a new um, superintendent, his name is Dr. Vitti, and he has asked every church to adopt a school. So it's 112 schools in, our, um, in the city of Detroit, and each of one of us are being asked to like to be kind of like a, a shepherd over the schools and over the students. So that's that's huge. So now we're being asked to take prayer. The church is asked to go back into the school, take prayer back into the school. So I think that's that is phenomenal for. Um... We have seen our prayers reach all levels of government, even to the highest level in this country, the White House. As long as I am your president. No one is ever going to stop you from practicing your faith or from preaching what's in your heart. Law enforcement is receiving creativity in fighting crimes. So it's exciting to see that technology marry with policing. If we continue to use technology in this manner, Detroit will become one of the safest big cities in America. This is not the same police department that I started with 21 years ago. Still the same great people, but now we're fighting crime smarter, we're using technology, we're using our minds more than our muscle, and we're constitutionally policing using things that we never thought possible. Motown, the Motor City. Detroit's had its time on top, and now, with hard work and people who believed and never gave up, our time has come again. Because right now, in Detroit, it's revival time. And so I saw there was, God said, I have much people in the city. There are many people who are against this thing. And so that was a good thing to see. These are all encouraging signs. So when you feel like things aren't moving quickly enough or whatever. God knows when you're getting weary. He knows when you're getting to the end of your faith in that realm. And he will always, it's Jesus's job to encourage your faith. It's his job to complete your faith. And so God is very, very uh, powerful in doing that. This is the vision. This is the end result of our prayers. For the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the seas. That's what God's after, and that's what we're after. So stay with your prayer. Stay with the level where you're at. I encourage you to increase in your commitment to the Lord. I know you don't think you have more time to give, but I know if you give the first fruits to God, he'll multiply it back to you. Amen. Sometimes it's just a matter of making some minor adjustments. And then God will fill in that time and allow you to have a vision that will change your world, change your city, change your family, change everything that you pray about. Amen? Praise God. Amen. I'm done. We're going to take a break for a half hour.